In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the B pipe and muffler on 94 to 97 accords. And that's what the muffler completely rusted off. The resonator on these vehicles really quiets down the exhaust by quite a bit. The inlet pipe completely rusted through and the muffler was just hanging from the front rubber hangers. When I checked the date code, I was surprised that it lasted as long as it did. So this is a Walker Quiet Flow SS. That's stainless steel, 409 stainless, so it is magnetic. It's not the best stainless steel, but it lasts a bit longer than aluminized components. This is the part number right here, and I do believe that these last two digits are the manufacturing date, so 05. So this muffler's been on this vehicle since 2005. So that's a pretty long life. And on the new muffler here, you'll see the part number, 55028, and the last two digits, 17, for 2017. So I'm pretty sure on Walker mufflers, the last two digits of this lower code here are the manufacturing year. So if you're curious how long your muffler lasted, check those two digits. I haven't had this confirmed by Walker, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And going on under, you can see where the muffler separated. And it goes on back to the mid pipe there. Now I could probably get away with just replacing the muffler, but I often find you replace the muffler and then in a very short amount of time, you're back replacing the mid pipe too. And as you can see here, the braid on the flex pipe here is starting to disintegrate. You have heavy rusting over here. It's just a matter of time before another rusted portion of this mid pipe fails. So I'm going to replace it all the way back to the catalytic converter. And here's where the flex pipe bolts to the catalytic converter. Now the good news is here, if all else fails, I could just cut the bolts right off because these aren't factory. From the factory there's a stud that's pressed in from this side here but what I can see here is the studs have been pressed out and ordinary bolts have been inserted so that's good for me but if the factory studs were still here and you let's say remove the nut and the threads are all messed up and the studs not salvageable what you have to do and this could be difficult is you have to heat up this flange back here. I mean, after you separate these components, heat up this flange that the stud goes through and then drive it out with an air hammer. If you don't have an air hammer, you can use a map gas torch to heat up the flange and drive it out with say a mini sledge, but you have to support the other side of this flange while you're hitting it with that hammer. Otherwise you'll bend the flange on the converter. Let's drop the pipe. Just spray the insulators with some silicone spray to make them easier to remove. Now in order to remove this pipe and drop the mid pipe here, this used to connect to the muffler, you normally have to remove these two spring bolts, but since I'm replacing the entire mid pipe, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to cut this bracket here to drop it. Due to the bend on this insulator here, you can't remove it without loosening that. Actually, I can easily remove it with an inexpensive special tool that pushes the exhaust hangers off, but I wanted to show what to do if you don't have that tool. I'll show the special tool in use at the end of the video. This hanger is near the fuel tank. If you have any visible fuel leaks or smell even a hint of fuel, don't cut anything under the vehicle until the leak is repaired. 
Normally, if I had to cut an exhaust hanger off, I'd use my angle die grinder, but I'll use a Dremel tool here. While it's not the most efficient tool, as you'll see, it's a tool you'd be more likely to have. Now I could just get the insulator right off. And that was a lot faster than messing around with those spring bolts unnecessarily. Even though the fuel tank on this vehicle was fine and there were no leaks, you can see I placed the tool so the sparks would be directed away from the fuel tank just to be safe. I also had to cut off another hanger on the B pipe. And down it comes. As you can see, Dremel tool is not exactly the best tool for the job, but if you have the time, it can get the job done. Now the whole pipe's down on the ground, so I have access to the fasteners on the back of the catalytic converter. There are spring bolts and exhaust gaskets further down, which allows me to bring the pipe down. Obviously, don't overdo it. Don't you know pull down real hard. You don't want to break anything. But this does give me access to the fasteners that I have to remove. At this point, I usually use my angle die grinders to cut the old bolts off, but I decided to show using a Dremel tool again on one of the fasteners. So I'm just going to cut this right off.
There. And off it comes. Now in my defense, I didn't have exactly the best angle to see what I was doing, so I had to attack it from a bunch of angles. But eventually you can get it out. Now I could just take a punch and drive the remnants of that bolt head out through the other side. And again, it doesn't matter if I munch up this flange with the grinder because of course this is getting replaced. That's why I didn't cut from the opposite side because that's on the catalytic converter. I don't want to mess up that flange. But this one, you know, if you go off to the side a little bit, no big deal. Take an old screwdriver and just drive it out. There you go. You can see these have a symbol for up, so this hole goes in here. I've already pre-coated my fasteners with anti seize These are the lock nuts I got from the Honda dealer. They're pretty inexpensive. Unfortunately, my camera battery died. I removed the old gasket, put the new one on. I put a little bit of RTV around the uh, inner diameter there because the flange was a little marked up. Looks like uh, air hammer marks where someone drove out the old studs. So just to fill those in, I put a little bit of RTV on there. I used orange high temperature RTV. See, I pre-installed the upper stud just to hold the gasket in place. So just slide the new pipe in, hang it off the upper bolt there, and then install the hangers. Once you have one nut in loose, then you can put all the other ones in. What I like to do at that point, once you have one nut in, is then raise the pipe up and install the hangers. So all I was doing there while I was lifting the pipe was just slipping these insulators onto these posts here, these two here, and this one back here. Sorry if you don't have the best angle, but once that RTV goes on, you're pretty much in a race against time. Just put my screwdriver in there to align it a little better. Find it a lot easier. Put one bolt in, install the insulators, then, you know, with it hanging up and not laying on you, it's easier to just adjust the bottom two to get the bolts to align. And just snug up the bolts evenly.
they don't need to be super tight. Just snug them up until the two flanges come together flush. Now granted, I could have probably managed to get these on and uh, left the rear of the exhaust hanging. I would have had a bit more clearance to get this top bolt here, but I prefer just not to have it lying on me while I'm working. So it's a little bit tighter getting this upper bolt, but it's doable with an extension. That's good. Tighten the nuts up until both flanges are flush with the gasket. And you can see the flange on the component is flush with the flange on the cat. The hangers on the muffler were OE and in good shape, so I decided to reuse them. Reinstall your insulators to the new muffler. Swing them off to the side like that so they don't get in the way until you're ready to install them. So here to install the muffler we have a new donut gasket and new spring bolts. Don't bother trying to salvage the old ones. Most of the time they're just too rusted and they're not worth saving. I like to apply a bit of anti-seize to the threads. As you can see there's no globs. It's a nice even coat so it doesn't make a mess. And install the donut gasket. It's a loose fit. It just hangs off the end of the pipe like that. The reason for this design with the spring bolts in this gasket is this allows these two pipes to move independently of one another. Let's put on the rear insulator first. And that allows me to just pivot up the muffler. Install these two easily. Pivot the insulators up and pull them back. There we go. Now we're in place. Now we can bolt the two pipes together. Pretty self-explanatory. Put the larger side of the spring bolt through the larger hole. And bring the two components together. and install the nut.
and snug both of them up evenly. This is a 15 and this is a 13. Go side to side and tighten them up evenly. You'll know when they're tight because the bolt will bottom out against this side of the flange and get tight all of a sudden. good. Let's test it out. Sounds good. Absolutely night and day. Then check the joints for leaks. Place your hand carefully around the flanges and feel for any exhaust that's escaping. We're good here. And this is the catalytic converter. This gets very hot. Be very careful you don't burn yourself here. Best to do this quickly after you initially start the vehicle. And we're good here. Now one thing I want to show you, and this is normal, is that some mufflers, and I've seen a few resonators, will have a little hole drilled at the bottom of them there. And as you can see, the purpose of that hole is to allow moisture to escape. So don't plug that up. That's there on purpose. That's not an accident. And it'll allow your exhaust system to last a little bit longer. Here's a look at the exhaust hanger removal tools. They make one for smaller hangers that sit on a smaller pin. And one for larger hangers that sit on a larger pin. You simply slip the fork half behind the exhaust hanger, place the pin on the pin holding the hanger, and just squeeze, and it pushes it right off. They're not necessary tools, but they do make removing stubborn exhaust hangers much easier, and they're not really that expensive. See, it easily removes these hangers without damaging them. <laughs> 